Is that right? Is that kind of where we were? We already part of it. We, we, uh, no, we'd already part, part of it. And then I told you to plot the rest. So who did? Screech. Hear the brake slamming on right there? This is this is when I wish I had a little thing that would make cricket noises. You know, you get all of a sudden this deathly silence in here. All right, we'll we'll go over it again. Deal was we had a, a rock climber who had uh, uh, last put a little piece of protection in. That's a, a physical connection with the wall, so that if he falls, he doesn't fall all the way down to the bottom. Which if it's a wall like. Uh, El Capitan and Yosemite Valley, that's a 2,000 foot fall. And I think only one person's ever survived that. So he'll put protection in, climb somewhat above that, so that if he falls, he'll only fall down to the protection that much farther, and then a little bit of stretch in the rope to actually cushion the fall. It's, it's no more than the type of things that your uh, airbag, your bicycle helmet, or your seatbelt do for you. They, they bring you to a stop less abruptly to cushion any of the uh, force required to bring you to a stop. So uh, he had, a, I believe, a, a 10 meter distance down to the protection, so he was gonna fall that, plus that much more, plus a little bit of stretch in the rope and then we were looking at that we were at the point where we were looking at the potential energy as a function of y because both of those potential energy components and what were they there were two potential energy components g for the gravitational the fact that he's going from a height up here to a height all the way down here and also then once he got to where the rope just became taut then there was a little bit of further drop as the as the rope stretched taking out the last of his speed and then bringing him to a stop I think we even had this distance yesterday or uh, last Wednesday didn't we wasn't that 2.7 meters we got that Okay, so we actually had that 2.7 meters. So we were looking at this right now and we found that uh, it, it was a, a, a piecewise function, I think they call it in math, where only the gravitational potential energy plays any part in the first 20 meters of the fall because the rope is just slack and and following, trailing along behind him. And it doesn't come into it until right here where the rope becomes taut and then starts to absorb the fall. And I chose to call that y equals zero. Arbitrary choice is our origin always is. Um, but that allowed us to separate the business above that, which was purely gravitational. from the part below that, which is now the gravitational and the elastic potential energy was coming into play. Right, I think we, uh, I think we had something like that. Yeah, that looks like it. And this was for y less than or equal to zero just because that was my arbitrary dividing place. So it is actually kind of a convenient choice, uh, which, is, uh, which is why I did that. And then we, uh, we were looking at that gravitational potential energy curve as a function of y. numbers I have, this is in kilojoules, and that's in meters. Okay, so we started at some point 20 meters above my origin,
And we did we figure out the energy at that point? Yeah, that was that was merely a matter of putting uh, uh, twenty into here, and well, the other numbers. I think he was seventy kilograms. 70, 80. 70 or eighty. One or the other. It's just a made-up number anyway. So this was fifteen point seven kilojoules of energy he started with. As he fell from there, he was losing gravitational potential energy. And in fact, since M and G are constants, he was losing it linearly. This is a function, a, a linear function, a straight line. In fact, uh, even had, we even know what the intercept is. It's zero, which makes sense. Uh, the gravitational potential energy is going to turn to zero at the origin. That's an arbitrary choice. Uh, gravitational potential energy isn't something we can actually go measure. We don't have a gravitational potential energy meter we can stick on something and see how much energy it's got. It's, it's uh, uh, nothing like that at all. It's a, it's a matter of us, us calculating it. Uh, what we're mostly interested in is the change in that anyway. And so when we look at the change, the, the origin has absolutely nothing to do with it. It just calculates out. But then we have uh, this linear function down to the origin because the intercept was zero. That's his gravitation. That, in fact, that's his total potential energy as he falls. And that's where we left it on Wednesday, right? Last Wednesday. We got right to that point. And then uh, we said we, we want to look at the rest of it. Actually, we don't need del there, do we? We can put a y in there because here del and y, since they both be measured from the same place, would be the same thing. All right, so we wanted to look at the uh, function from then on. And in fact, uh, I even have these values. I can't remember if we had them up there. It's just a matter of putting in the numbers in appropriate units and calculating them so that we then have the equation to look at. And so I think that one uh, right, came out to be that. Okay, did anybody look at the rest of this function? Obviously, it's parabolic, and it's, uh, uh, remember what it means when this is positive? That means it curves up, so we know that uh, it's going to keep going somehow and then curve back up. Did anybody look at that and see what the numbers were that came out with it? Stop treating your weekends like weekends. You know, you got to get to my age, yeah. then you sleep in, and then you get some coffee, and then you putter around the yard a little bit because you're tired of the wife yelling at you in the house, and then, then you go take a nap. All right. It, it is parabolic upward. It goes down something like that. It's rather steep. Uh, very little of it actually nicks below there. Can anybody venture a guess of what this y value is? That's where it returns to the original energy it had before. He returns to his original potential energy. In fact, when he was up there, that's all the energy he had because he didn't have any kinetic energy. He wasn't moving. So he's fallen, fell down to here. That's where the rope tightens up. Anybody know what this point is where the energy curve goes back up to the original 15.7? Is that, is that this point we calculated of negative 2.7? How did we find that? Remember how we found that 
That negative 2.7, what was it we solved for? Well, we, the what? We, we did the work energy equation, which really wasn't a whole lot different than this anyway, and solved for that. That is the minus 2.7 meters right there. That's where all of his potential energy, gravitational potential energy, has turned into potential energy in the rope. It's now got the rope out at maximum stretch. The rope is storing the maximum possible uh, potential energy it can, and he's at full stretch. In fact, just to show you what the curve looks like, um, push the button ahead of time and it doesn't go on. Joey, keep an eye on that. Would you see that little green light? Joey? Joey? Don't look away. That reminds me, that keeps saying Joey, he keeps looking at me and I'm saying Joey because I remember once I put my daughter in the in the corner because she was bad and she'd turn around and look at me and I'd say, turn around! And she started crying because she was turned around in her mind. In my mind, I wanted her unturned around, which is turned around and in the corner. So, good luck being parents, guys and gals. It's 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 tough. It's a tough business. All right, hopefully this will come up. I get the 16 buttons pushed that I gotta push. Wolf vision on. There, there's there's the full curve. Oh, sorry, that's not the one I wanted. Here's the full curve. Now I, I've got the axis over here rather than up through the zero like I draw, drew on the board, but it's essentially the same. So you can see it, it, there's, a, there's almost nothing below the uh, x-axis that it gives, but then it does return from the 20, when it had the 15.7, down to the 2.7, that's just barely beyond this mark, and it returns to its original uh, energy level. What I've done then is I took this little box area and blew it up just so you can see it in a little bit more detail. Because what it illustrates is we've got this, this low point here, which is right at about minus 0.32. Where he's at his minimum energy, at least his minimum potential energy. Remember, the kinetic energy is not in this. So that's his minimum potential energy point. What is he doing right there besides screaming? But in terms of the physics, what is he doing at this point right here? The rope is already become, starting to become taut, because remember that happened at y equals zero, which is right here on the axis. So he's gone a little bit past that. He's starting to tighten up the rope. What's happening to him at that point? That's obviously the point of minimum total potential energy. Well, can, you, can you be even more specific than that? Well, let's see. Let's see if we can go back and remember something. Uh, the total energy he's got at any time is going to be made up of three things. At least three things as far as we care about in terms of mechanical energy. There's chemical and, and, and thermal and caloric and nuclear and stuff. We're not dealing with that. We're just dealing with the type of uh, uh, mechanical energy we've been looking at. It's made up of three parts. Kinetic. 
Work energy equation. Work energy equation. What else? Gravitational potential energy. And elastic potential energy. In fact, that's that's the whole right hand side of the work energy equation. We could have written the whole thing like that. In this problem, what work is being done? Who else said it? Len said it. John, you said it? You said zero? Anybody else? I don't want to have just, I mean, even when we vote for president, we have two choices. Not really going to it back up. We don't vote for president, not if we know what we're doing. What a waste of time. Did you ever see that show with Kevin Costner where the, the election comes down to a dead heat tie? So the, the one vote to be cast is Kevin Costner. He was this drunk in a trailer in, in Arizona somewhere. Which what? Yeah. I, I'll vote if it, my vote makes the choice. Then I'll vote. Other than that, what's the point? Uh, there's an open question. Answer it. Oh yeah, that was the question. How much work is being done in this problem? Stop laughing. I forgot the question. Then laugh at yourself. How much work is being done in this problem? We had a guess of zero from our two most competent students. Should I say that? So maybe they're right. Work done by what? When we calculate it, non-conservative forces. Wait a second, though. When he falls and the rope becomes tight because of this protection, doesn't that protection exert a force on the rope? And isn't that an outside force that we can should consider in this problem? In the work it does. I have a yep. I have a nope. I have a hmm. I mean, clearly, that piece of whatever it is he pounded into the wall or however he stuck that to the wall to, to stop any further fall, clearly that exerts a force on the rope. Otherwise, he could do it with a piece of gum. No, that's not. This this isn't elastic. The rope is elastic. This isn't. You know, this is this is the wall, and he's found some crack here, and he jammed this thing into the crack. It's called a chalk. It's got a sling on it. And then he clips in a carabiner, and then he runs the rope through that. So when he falls. And the rope comes up tight against this thing, and his partner's holding on to the other end so that this doesn't really come into it. It's only the part above that protection. Clearly, that thing's going to have a huge force on it. You wouldn't want to be standing there holding that with your hand when this guy falls. Rip it right off your hand. Take your fingers with it. Isn't that clearly an outside force exerted on our system, which is the rope and the climber? Uh, yeah, it's a normal force. As, uh, as the carabiner goes like that, and the rope from his partner goes there, and then he goes down there, uh, that would be a normal force exerted by the carabiner on the rope. Why isn't it doing work? Or is it? We should put that in there. Did you just say something, John, about that? Well, why not? 
mean, that's a huge force. You know, that's going to be several thousand pounds of force exerted on that, which is pretty pertinent to that climber. He doesn't want to use uh, a shoestring. You expect it to hold. Wouldn't use a, a paper clip for this carabiner. Does everybody know what a carabiner is? It's one of those clip snap rings, I think they're sometimes called. Climbers call them carabiners. John's got one. Is that what we're going to see, John? If you got one you wouldn't want to use. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right yeah. right I mean, the, these, these are the little cheap ones, but you, you know, that's the thing we're talking about. You clip it on the rope, then it's able to, or you clip it on the, uh, the sling coming out of the chalk, and then you clip the rope into it and it snaps shut so the rope can't come out as a way to attach the rope to the wall to cut his fall, to keep his fall from being all the way to the bottom. Why doesn't this force, this normal force that that carabiner exerts on the rope, why doesn't that do any work? Not it's not going anywhere. There's no delta x. Work, remember, is f delta x in its simplest form. There's no delta x here. He's going a big delta, well, delta y actually, but that force really isn't. Once that force is there, there's, there's no distance that thing actually travels that would cause any outside work. There is no outside work being done on him. Delta E is zero. Therefore, E is... No? Joey, don't talk with your mouth full. Do I have to call your mom in here? Yeah, you're going to choke. E is what? Can you do it in sign language, Joe? No? Oh, we're all waiting. God, What's he going to say? We can't <laughs> wait. This is so exciting. It's oh, now he gets credit. If delta E is zero, then E is constant. So this quantity is constant. What have we graphed here? graph only this part, which means if that part drops, this part must go up by the same amount. However much this blue part drops, the kinetic energy must go up. So let's see, here we're at a place where the U is at a minimum. This part here has become as minimum as it can be. Why? I go take a nap in the lab there. I can't watch this. You're going to break your neck. I'm worried about you. Bill, would you scooch over so he can fall asleep on your shoulder? I don't want him to get hurt. As this reaches its absolute minimum, what must happen to kinetic energy? must reach an absolute maximum because the two together are always a constant. In fact, we know what that constant is. It's 15.7. So as this drops below 15.7, that's going to pick up all of that extra. So this is a point of minimum potential energy and maximum kinetic energy. And how do we recognize maximum kinetic energy? Well, kinetic energy is one half m v squared. So he's either at his maximum one half, his maximum mass. It's actually losing mass fouling himself as he falls at the he must be at maximum velocity at that point. At that point he's reached his maximum velocity. From then on he starts slowing down. Actually his his 
he was picking up speed all the way down here and then started picking up less quickly until finally he's now starting to lose speed as that kinetic energy turns back into uh, mostly, well, and to almost entirely, the, the tensile energy in the spring as he brings the string, the spring, to maximum kinetic stretch. Now, he's got as much stored up in the rope as he can. What's his kinetic energy here? Zero. That's where he came to a stop. That's how we, in fact, uh, define that spot. When it comes down to that, that, that complete uh, point down there. Uh, what's he do then? He'll stop and then bounce back up like uh, bungee jumpers do, and he'll start the the uh, curve again. And you've seen the bungee jumpers do that. They bounce and they'll come up far enough where their their spring starts to go slack again. In fact, uh, I think some of them have to actually hold it so they don't become retangled in it as they come back up. They're tumbling a bit, so he'll go down. And uh, if, if everything was ideal, which climbing ropes are not ideal elastic media, he could bounce between these two things forever. Evidently they don't, because there's not a bunch of guys going, 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 going on, on these rock walls where they've all fallen. All right. So that's what we do with the uh, potential energy curve. There was a problem like that on the on the homework, I think. Very much the same kind. That the points of importance are uh, these minimums and maximums. Obviously, that's where something's going on. Something big is is happening there. Um, there's also other energy levels, for example, that zero energy level might be important. However, that was pretty arbitrary that we chose it there. All right. Any other questions? Do you want to ask some questions for tomorrow's test? Or I could give you another work energy problem since I know you love them. So the same. Yeah, same format. Couple, a couple of uh, uh, multiple choice questions, but a couple. Uh, we don't want to look at that. Uh, but a couple of uh, a couple problems that you have to work out. or 12 or something like that problems around there about maybe two-thirds of them three-quarters of them are put are uh, multiple choice and the rest are uh, work the problem which some of the multiple choice are anyway it's just once you've got an answer then you look and see if it's on the list so it's kind of one and the same for a few of them but some of them are, are more concept questions Open book, open notes. You're going to have the Malcolm handicap tomorrow? Or? I think so. Any specific questions? Alan? I'm trying not to say it. But say what? I was wondering if you could address this problem. This, this problem with what, what really happens when you're on a rope and you fall. Oh, yeah. The force gets transferred yeah. into the Usually you fall out a little bit. The rope will actually tighten up over here. And then it's a bit of a, an elastic pendulum into the wall. Uh, a 20-meter a fall is a pretty good fall. That's, that's uh, quite possibly uh, more than you'd want to fall. Well, I don't know you want to fall any distance, but... Uh, uh, a conservative climber would have put more protection in in that, that 10 meters than rather than to get 10 meters above uh, his last protection. So, thanks for 
making it a little more gory than it was anyway. Any questions? It's your test tomorrow. If not, uh, I don't want to just stand here and look pretty. type problem since those are the newest. An older one. An older work energy problem? Yeah. Did we, we had one specifically of, of that, I think. Well we had we had both the uh, that sweep that, that seat in the sling and then we also had that, that cylinder where the floor drops out. I don't remember. I don't know what I put on the test that well. Plus, what you think is hard, you think is easy, and you think is in French. If you feel comfortable with it, though, you, you can go if you want. Or if you're sleepy, you can go. When did you go to bed last night? Or did you? <laughs> you bet. Don't you guys want to hear the answer? I do. Your head's been going around like this all so far today. And you, you were so tired you skipped drawing class. That's how tired you got to be really tired to skip drawing class. What did you go to bed last night? Two. Two. What were you doing until two? Was it four? <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> and how come it isn't here? It's too far. Wow. So you. I don't know. I feel bad. Actually, kind of going to bed before it's done and getting them early and finishing it. That works better. And you're not shot for the whole day. No questions? When? Comfortable? Huh? No, I got you want you want a work energy one? Tired of work energy. Len like you like one of those? You'd stay for that? Yeah. What's up? A work energy problem. But you two would would be unhappy. Uh, anything's fine. I guess. Anything's fine. That's the spirit. Yeah. I'll do anything. Just do something. All right. Apropos for the uh, the chapter here. We'll do this one. All right. Here's here's a little mounting spot on the wall to which is attached a spring to which is attached a mass. So at this point, that's 1.5 meters from one end of the spring to the other. This object is a quarter of a kilogram. It's released from rest such that it passes down here. Now this is all the length of the spring. That's what these lengths are. 
canal falls down to that point where it's then going. Since it's a spring, it's not going to be going horizontally there like it would if that was a non-stretching cable. Since this is a spring, it can stretch some. It's actually got a little bit downward velocity there. At that point, it's going five meters per second. The rest length of the spring is one and a half meters. Well, that's good. So that means we just didn't even have to stretch the spring at all to hook it up between the mounting spot and that, that little object there. I want you to find the spring constant. How stiff should that spring be so that it does that? If it's too soft, too stretchy, then it's going to be going down here farther and it's probably going to be going faster. If it's too stiff, it'll be going up here too high. It might not be going fast enough. I want it to go that speed, that direction, that point. So I need the right spring. So I need you to tell me what K is so I can call up Earl. Order the right spring from Earl. Oh, you know Earl's number? Yeah, I'll give you after class. Oh, I've got it. I got him on speed dial. That arrow that you got for five meters per second. Uh huh. Um, you're saying is that two meters is that the bottom of the curve, or is it going to stretch further? That's that's where it's directly below the mounting spot. So, so that beyond that, I don't care what it does. I want it to be doing that at that point. What I mean, so that arrow is actually horizontal. Uh, no, look at the picture. I'm a better drawer than that, aren't I? If he had a non-stretchy cable, then he'd be doing a quarter turn, then it would have to be horizontal. But because this spring stretches, gets longer, it means he's following some elliptical path of some kind. Be lazy. Well, I hope it's kind of obvious. Work energy equation would work well here. It's a position dependent problem. It has a spring in it. Has gravitational stuff in it. Don't be lazy writing down the work energy equation. You've got to get the uh, all the little pieces right. So don't leave out your delta symbols as if that's too much work. Yeah, Joey. Gotcha. So no, don't ask me. I'm off duty. I'm at the management retreat. That's John. I'll let John help you out here. Put your minds together. Yeah. 
So really, K is just buried in there, and you get all the content. So. Consult with each other a little bit if that'll help. No. Sometimes we too. 
I think we need some, some groups to form here. There's a multiple head process. I don't know. Give it to you. Give it to you. energy equation. Anything? No work. No work. This really isn't any different than was our rock climber problem, at least in terms of the work energy equation. It's just the, the rock climber problem, we were concerned with where he comes to a stop. This one, we're concerned with someplace before that. Yeah, I'm 
Uh, let me help. Did you did you divide the UE? Theta. Oh, yeah. 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 Corner of 
per kilogram. That is M. What'd you put in for B? B. What about this angle? That's what Alan was wrestling with for some time. What about it? You just ignored it? No. <laughs> the angle, it's 90 degrees, so it doesn't matter. No, it's not. No, I mean above that between there and there. Oh, yeah, that's, that's 90 degrees. This is, this is 90 degrees there, but this angle here is not. So what'd you do about it? Forgot about it? You're too honest. You're going to fudge everybody else. They don't lie to me about anything. You'll just tell me, here's, what, here's the situation. <laughs> What, Joey? Kinetic energy has no directional component to it. This is not the vector squared. There's no such thing as the square of a vector. This is just the magnitude squared, just like it is. So what's that come out to be? We had some disagreement between people. Is what? 3.125 newton meters. 3.125 newton meters. I saw a couple other things. Uh, I think some people were were being kind of loose about when you do this squaring and when you do this dividing by a half. You know about the order of operations. It's one of the very first things you learn. I don't know. You probably, you guys probably learned that kind of stuff back in sixth or seventh grade. You learned about order of operations, if not even sooner. All right. So the next one. Let's see. We'll do delta U G next. It's just be, not because it's next, but just because it doesn't involve K in it. So we'll get the ones out of the way that don't have the K in them. Mg delta H. We've got all those pieces. What you put in for G? Negative. Man, for like the millionth time, G is down. Laughing at. Doesn't matter. G is a well. We take it to be a constant. It's not actual, but it's it's uh, uh, we it's it's an average of values across the Earth. Is essentially what it is. What you put in for delta H? What you put in for delta H? Two meters. No. Negative two meters. It's falling in the direction of the gravitational field. Will that give us appropriate units? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's Newton meters right there. And so when we do that, what do you get? Negative 4.9. Any disagreement so far? Delta UE, one half. There's the K we're looking for. Del two squared minus del one squared. Um, actually, was using A and B, so let's be consistent with that. What's del B? This two meters 
is L. Del, however, is L minus L0, and L0 is 1.5. So it's 2 meters minus the rest length, because that's how much the spring actually stretched, which is what we want here. So we're looking for K. Del B is, what is that, 0.5. Squared. What's del A? Its rest length is 1.5 meters. It is 1.5 meters long right here. So it's no stretch, no compression put in it. You're able to just set it right on the hooks there. So del A is zero. It's how much the string has been stretched since you took it out of the box. It hasn't been stretched at all at that point. So what's one half times 0.5 squared? It's what? Yeah, 0.125. K, K is unknown, meters squared, what must K be in for this to be Newton meters, which it must, or I can't add them together, they must all be Newton meters. What must K be? Huh? If I have newtons per meter times meters squared, that will give me newton meters. So I put everything back together. I get zero equals delta k is 3.125 newton meters. Delta ue. 0.125 K Newton meters minus 4.9 Newton meters. In disagreement, what's K equal then? That's all left. Uh, it's about as simple as an equation can be in physics. One. Fourteen point two newtons per meter. We know it's got those units because that's what it had to have. We checked it back here. Mike. Um, when you got negative two meters for the length, um, or for the change in height, how come it's negative when gravity is down, and that's the way that it fell was down? Was down one? That's where I messed up. All right, let's uh, let's 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 do two possibilities here. Uh, starts here ends up down here. Right? Let's do one possibility where down is negative. So that means mg h2 minus h1, well actually hb minus ha would be Mg, those are both positive, so we don't care about those. What's H2? If if our origin's right there and down is negative. No, H2. H2 is negative 2 meters minus H1, which is 0 meters. So that agrees with what we had there, and that's what most people did in their minds anyway. 
another possibility. Let's see. Let's uh, let's call that positive. Mg H two minus H one. The M is positive, the G is positive, so we don't care about those. H2 is 2 minus 0, which is different than what we got. Oh, and that's meters. So clearly it matters. But what if we did what then I guess if you want to do this call down negative I mean down positive um, well it's kind of artificial I guess but we could call this the origin then the numbers would work out okay wouldn't they Because this would be then uh, zero, and H one is is two, which would give us minus two. Actually, that'd give us a minus minus two. So the question, the answer is, it, you can't just do anything you want. You have to pay attention to it. What's important to us is that it goes deeper into the gravitational field, and we call that negative. This, changing these up and down, making off plus and minus, we're not taking into account that it's, whether it's traveling in the direction of the gravitational field or not. That's what's crucial for the gravitational, uh, for, for the gravitational potential energy. If it goes deeper into the gravitational potential and gravitational field, it's going to lower potential energy. That's not arbitrary decision one way or the other. Whereas all of this stuff is. And if we flip this, but don't take into account this, then it just doesn't come out right. I guess that we could handle it by putting a negative on there, but I don't want you to do that. So this is not kinematics where our choice of origin, our choice of direction didn't matter. This is kinetics, which is driven by the direction of this, and that has to be taken into account. So I think the easiest thing to do is take down as negative, well, just just take a down change as negative, an up change as positive, and then you're always fine, and leave G is always positive, the number itself. But, you gotta pay attention to your own negative signs. Might that help any? Yeah. The best thing to do probably is just be consistent with what you're doing. You're okay. We've almost always taken down as negative. It's always worked before, so why change? In kinetics, I'm sorry, in kinematics, it doesn't matter as much. All that is its position. This, we're talking about something that has a directional component to it itself. Um, what about the fact that the spring is pulling horizontally here, pulling vertically here? Anybody take that into account? It doesn't matter, the spring's constant is going to be the same, but it's doesn't matter. All we care about is the amount the spring is stretched. We don't care which direction it's stretched in. 
which I think makes all this stuff simpler. There's no component in the direction of here, no directional component here. I have to worry about that a little bit, but it's pretty easy to say if it goes down as negative, it goes up as positive. Where were most of you getting messed up? Most of you had that? Most of you had this one? Most of you didn't have this one? What was what was screwing up here? Was it algebra? Yeah, I just read it as an X and I should have read it as del squared uh, or like the difference. Oh, you had the two meters in here? Yeah, that's why I don't like it when the book uses X because it makes it doesn't make it clear that it's the amount of stretch. What other questions? Huh? A correction? Friction. Well, friction problem. Um, I think we we had I think I gave you one we may not actually have come back to. Are you talking about the UPS problem with the box that's spring or not? Huh? Are you talking about the UPS problem? The package on the No, I think we, we did that one, I think. The one I don't think we ever came back to. Tell me if we did. Is this one where we had uh, a two kilogram crate, a one kilogram crate that was tied to the wall, and a 20 newton force on the bottom crate? with a coefficient of kinetic friction at each surface, each interface of point four. Remember, uh, friction coefficients always, always uh, between two surfaces. So did we finish that one? No. No, we didn't. Okay. What did I ask you to find? I think I asked you to find the acceleration yep. of the lower block. And tension. Huh? And the tension. No, the tension. No. Oh, okay. Find A2. We'll call 2 the 2 kilogram block. We wanted to find the acceleration of it. Obviously, the other one, the top one's not going anywhere. It's acceleration zero. Uh, but then also find the tension in that line right there. So how do we do that? Yeah, if we if we sum the forces on this block, we're we're interested in how that block accelerates. So Let's look at it. Maybe we don't even have to do anything with the other block, and we can we can be done with it straight away. So, um, sum the forces on that, and that uh, will cause that mass to accelerate. So, best way to when you sum the forces is to get a free body diagram. So here's our two kilogram block. Obviously it's got that force on it. What else? It's got a normal force where? Perpendicular to the surface. Ter perpendicular to the surface, which is horizontal. So it's got a normal force there. Any other forces? It's weight, 
which is uh, it's two kilograms times G. What's that? Nineteen point six newtons, something like that. Okay, that's its weight. Just so we don't get confused, I'll put W two. What else? Any other forces? Uh, where? Oh, here. Going which direction? Parallel to the surfaces in contact, so that's easy. But is it going left or right? Uh, opposite the direction of motion. Or left. We're going to pull it out to the right. Friction's trying to hold it back to the left. So I'll even put that right there. Why didn't you account for the weight of the box on top of that, though? Who said I didn't? Didn't you only multiply the two kilograms by 9.8? Yeah. The weight of the box. But then there's also the one kilogram box. I didn't say we were done. Are there any other forces? There's also friction at the top because it's dragging out from under that block. So, oh, which direction does that push? Yeah, that, that block stays there. This block comes out from under it. So friction's trying to drag it back. Are those two the same? Are those two frictions the same? Maybe, but there's no reason to assume they are, other than that it makes things a lot easier. So we'll call this, I don't know, we'll call this FL for the lower surface. We'll call this FU. Because it's always fun to do that. Yeah. Any other forces? Besides the force of gravity being a little stronger over in the corner. Yeah, the, the upper box is exerting a force down on it. If you didn't think so, what if that upper box was a couple tons and your hand was underneath it? You'd think, yeah, I think there's some forces there. So there's some force from the upper box. In fact, it's the action-reaction pair. As the upper box pushes down on the lower box, the lower box pushes up on it with a normal force. It's the equal and opposite of that. How big is it? It's what? 9.81. Yeah, it's just the weight of the upper box. If we had a scale right there in between those two, it would just read the weight of the upper box. So that's pretty pretty easy. That's We'll call that W1, 9.8 newtons. Any other forces? What? The normal force. What normal force? From the, from the two kilogram box up to the one kilogram. The two kilogram box is pushing up on the one kilogram box? Correct. So if we took the one kilogram box away, the two kilogram box would go up? <laughs> no. It's a normal force. It's a normal force. It's a normal What, Joe? Are there any more forces? Alan? Well, you can probably account for the normal force down at the bottom for the one kilogram box. Yeah, but the two you kilogram for it somewhere. Two kilogram box. Because you got three kilograms pushing down, not just two. So the normal force at the bottom is. Yeah. Sitting on this surface right here is three kilograms. <coughs> and I've got one, two, three kilograms pushing down. Don't outthink these. Oh, no, I was just saying that because you didn't you put the normal force on before, you put the weight of it. On the oh, I box. put it on the order they were given to me. Oh. Not in the order which they actually occur. Yeah, that force doesn't occur until the weights are there. But the weights are there even before we write them down. Uh-oh. No other forces. So we've got that force and those two forces in the x direction.
that will cause that mass to, to accelerate, which we're looking for. What are those two frictions? Let's see, the upper one is the coefficient at that surface times the normal force at that surface. What's the normal force at that surface? If, uh, if you're not sure, let's draw the one kilogram box. Tension there. It's weight there. What else? Let's get these drawings up real, because then it's just a matter of adding things together. It's just algebra after that, once you got the free body diagrams. What? Normal force. So is that the same as this normal force? No. No, so we we better number those. We got two different normal forces. Any other force in there? If not, this box is going to accelerate to the left. As the two kilogram pulls under it it tries to drag the one kilogram one with it. Is this a third friction force or is this really one of these two? It's equal and opposite to Fu. So um, that then is the coefficient of friction times the normal force at that place. The normal force from this drawing is the same as W1. So that's that one. What's FL? Same coefficient of friction times what normal force? Times what? Times N2. Is N2 equal to W2? Whatever the picture says, whatever the free body diagram says, that's the best way to get the normal force. N2 must be equal to W1 plus W2. All right, I'll give you those numbers so you can check them. A2. Two point one four meters per second. The tension. Three point nine two newtons. Wow, a lot less than the twenty. The friction's picking up a lot of that. Okay. <coughs> 